All right, how you guys doing? This is Mr. Muscarello coming at you here with section 10.2, and we're going to take a look at finding arc measures. But first, we'll start off with a little bit of a joke. What did the triangle say to the circle? You're pointless. Yeah, that's right. Now, we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of vocabulary here that have to do with segments and arcs of a circle. Now, first thing we're going to talk about is this piece called a central angle. And a central angle is going to be an angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle. All right, so that's pretty straightforward, and we'll get into a little bit more about the central angle and its measurement as it relates to the arc that it intersects. Now, we've got two other types of arcs. We've got a minor arc and a major arc. Now, a minor arc is an arc that measures less than 180 degrees and a major arc is an arc that measures more than 180 degrees. Now if you look at the diagram that's on the right, there's something kind of small right here, but it's a detail that usually plays into effect here. A major arc is usually with three letters. Okay, you'll see three letters that represent a major arc, while as a minor arc, minor arc is only going to have two letters to describe it. So that's going to be something that's going to help you out in most cases, in most cases. Now the next piece that we're going to take a look at is this word called a semicircle. And you guys probably already know what a semicircle is. It's an arc that measures 180 degrees. And the endpoints of the semicircle, they're going to be the diameter. The endpoints of a semicircle are going to be the diameter. So that's going to be something to pay attention to and look for when you take a look at a semicircle. We've got an inscribed angle, and then we have what's called an intercepted arc. Now, for these guys, the intercept inscribed angle, that's going to be this angle that's right here. The vertex is going to lie right on the edge of the circle. The arc that it intersects is going to be called the intercepted arc and that's going to lie on the interior of the inscribed angle. So those are going to be our key vocabulary words that we're going to work with here and we're going to get into the formulas here for each one of these here in a moment. Now what I want you to do first, we're going to play around with this piece a little bit in our notes. Our central angle is going to have a certain measurement and our central angle here is going to be angle B or angle, you could call it angle ABC or angle CBA. So we're going to be talking about the number of degrees here in this angle. As we're going to take a look at this central angle here, and I want you to pay attention to the different measurements. One, this AC, so that's going to represent our arc measurement from A over to C, and the other angle ABC, that's going to represent our central angle. Now notice what happens no matter what I change my angle to, it's always going to be the same thing as the intercepted arc. So what conclusion can you make about the number of degrees of your central angle compared to your intercepted arc of the central angle? The measure of the central angle equals the intercepted arc. Okay, so that's going to be one of the key ideas that we're going to work with here on this. The next piece we're going to take a look at is the relationship between the inscribed angle and the intercepted arc. So our intercepted arc here is going to be this piece right here from D all the way to F and our inscribed angle is going to be this piece right here basically angle E. So here we've got angle DEF measured and we've got our arc from F to D measured. Now notice what happens as we move everything around. Now let me move this up just so maybe it's a little bit easier to see get this guy kinda out of the way a little. So here we go we're going to play with these pieces now. I'm going to try and get it pretty close so it'll have some numbers that will be a little bit nicer to work with. Some of you might already see that relationship. What's the relationship between the measure of the arc and the measure of the ang intercepted angle? Some people might see it already. Do you think you have it? If you do, go ahead and write down what you think it is. If you said the inscribed angle is half the intercepted arc, or the intercepted arc divided by 2, then you were correct. So basically, in a nutshell, if we knew that this angle right in here was, say, 30, then that would mean our intercepted arc would have to be 60. 
All right, so that's one thing that we'll play around with a little bit more here in a moment. Now, the next piece we're going to take a look at is two inscribed ankles that intersect the same arc. So with these, we're going to have to play around a little bit with it so we can kind of see what's going on. So we're going to have this arc right here from D to F. Now, we've got two intersected angles, and one of them is going to be right here. But then notice over here, so I'm going to do a little bit lighter blue, we're going to have this other part right here. So both of those intersect that same arc, the same arc of being DF in this case. So we're going to play around with this for a second and see what pattern you guys notice with this. Alright, so as I change the different angle measurements of the arc, so as arc DF changes or FD, notice basically angle G and angle E, what's true about their measures. Well, you got it. They're both the same. Now, don't forget, they're also half of the intercepted arc. So here, we're told that FD or D, arc DF, that's 55.70. So if we divide that in half, we'll end up with that 27.85. So that's going to give us this little piece right here, where we've got the measure of angle DGF is going to be equal to the measure of angle DEF. Now, over here on the right, I want you to take a look at arc GE. There's two angles in that circle, two inscribed angles, that are going to be congruent to each other. And I want you to see if you can go ahead and name those two angles. Go ahead and hit pause, name the two angles, and then come back and see if you got them correct. All right, so how'd you do? Did you get the measure of angle GDE is equal to the measure of angle GFE? If you did, good for you. Proud of you guys. Now that's it for this example. Now we're going to take a look at a couple of other pieces as they relate to central angles. We're going to practice some of those pieces coming up. Now here for example number one we're going to find the measure of each arc of circle P where RT is the diameter. So that tells us a couple of things. One, it tells us that if RT is the diameter then I know this arc from here all the way around all of that has got to be 180 degrees because that's going to be a semicircle. I also know that inside here, so I'm going to use some properties of lines, some old school stuff, because from here right to here, I know all that's got to be 180. And if I know part of it's 110, that missing part must be 70 right there. So I just wanted to play around with that and kind of put some pieces in there. Now, if this part's 70, then angle TPS is a central angle. So that means this angle here is, or this arc, arc TS, that part's going to be 70. And then I've got this other part, this other arc right here. All of that is going to be the same thing as angle RPS, which is just going to be a value of 110 degrees. So I already figured all that stuff out, and i got to go back to my question and figure out what it was I was asked for. Now RS, all right, so from R to S, I already figured that out. That has a measurement of 110 degrees. Boom, done. Then I've got to figure out RTS. Now here's where the order matters. So I start with R. I go all the way around to T and then over to S. So I'm going to add up those two pieces, that 180 plus that 70. So that's going to give me a grand total of 250 degrees. All right, so just make sure you do your arithmetic correctly on that. And then lastly, I start with R and then I go to S and T. So that's going to, I'm going to add up those two pieces, 110 plus 70. And it's going to give me a total of 180 degrees. So that's it for those those three examples. That was pretty straightforward stuff. Just take your time. Make sure you do your arithmetic correctly. And that's it. Now here for example number two, we're going to start out with the arc addition postulate. So we're going to find, which basically is very similar to the segment addition postulate, but this time we're just adding arcs instead of segments. Now we're going to go back and take a look at some vocabulary words from before: major arc, minor arc, and semicircle. And we're going to take a look at finding the measure of each arc. But first, let's go back and remember what these are. Minor arc is less than 180 degrees. It's some arc less than 180. Major arc is more than 180 degrees. And a semicircle, that equals 180 degrees. So just kind of reviewing some vocabulary there. Now, what I want to do first is find all the missing angles on the inside of the circle that I can. And check this out. Since from here to here, since all of that piece right there, that makes a straight line, then that means this piece in here is going to have to be 80 from 180. That means that piece is just going to be 100 degrees right there. So that angle is going to be 100. And I'm going to use that to help me out with some other stuff here momentarily. 
Now all of these are central angles, so that means their intercepted arcs are going to be the exact same thing. So that means this angle is going to be 60, this angle's arc is going to be 100, arc TS, that's going to be 80, and then from T all the way to Q, that's going to be 120 degrees. All right, so I've got all of my arc measures around the outside, around the outside. Now all I got to do is take a look and go in the order that I'm given for each one of my arcs. Now for A, so we're starting with T and we're going to Q. So that part right there from TQ, that has a measurement of 120 degrees. Now anything that's less than 180 is called a minor arc, so I'm good to go there. Now angle or arc QRT, so I'm starting with Q. Now this is where we just got to take our time and be careful. So I'm starting with Q, and I'm going through R, and I'm going all the way around to T. So I've got to add up those three numbers. I've got to add up the 60, 100, and the 80. And when I find the sum of those three numbers, so that's my 60 plus 100 plus 80, all of those pieces together, I get a grand total of 240 degrees, which means that that is a major arc. Alright, so that's all you have to do for this section. I think you guys probably have this, you know, part down because by now your skills are pretty solid in geometry and you know how to add different pieces together. So go ahead and hit pause, figure out the rest of these, and then come on back, check and see how you did. So how did you do with the rest of that? Hopefully, you nailed it and you got it all right. If you didn't, just take your time to make sure you did your arithmetic right, because chances are you probably just messed something up with that. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Now, let's move on to something else. Check out example number three here. Here, we're going to be given circle P, and we've got to find these two measures here. The first one is the measure of angle T. Now, notice the measure of angle T is right here, and that's an half of my intercepted arc and my intercepted arc is RS so that means the measure of angle T is going to be RS whatever that arc is divided by 2 so the measure of angle T is just going to be half of 48 or the measure of angle T is just going to be 24 degrees so that's pretty straightforward stuff that's 24 degrees alright no big deal now for example B, we've got to find the measure of arc QR. Now to find that measure, we're going to kind of work with this piece right here, that diameter. Well, this top piece right here, all the way around, we know that that's got to be 180 degrees. All right, so that's one of the pieces that we're going to use for this. Now with that said, let's kind of get after the different parts of it. First, I'm going to take a look at this angle right here, my inscribed angle of QRT, that whole angle is 50 degrees which means this arc from Q to T that's going to be double that so that part is going to have to be 100 now if that parts 100 then from Q all the way to R because that makes a semicircle that means that piece is going to have to be 80 so the measure of arc QR well that's 80 degrees no big deal there now we've got a couple more examples here and check this out. We're going to take a look at example 4. Find the measure of arc RS. Okay, so let's mark that. RS is this arc right here. All right, that's going to be pretty straightforward. And the measure of angle STR. So then I'm going to also have to find this angle right here. STR. Notice that that angle, as well as angle SUR, both of those intercept the same arc, which means that they're both going to have the same measurement. So STR is going to be the same thing as RUS. So these two guys right here, they're going to be equal in that. But we'll get to those guys in a minute. First, we've got to find measure of angle RS, or arc RS. And arc RS, there's 31. So if I double that, RS is going to give me 62. Because 31 times 2 gives me 62. So RS is going to have a value of 62. Now the measure of angle STR, well that's the same thing as angle RUS, so that is going to have a measure of 31 degrees. So make sure we write down our information on that, and that's it, we're going to be done with that section. Now we've only got a couple more to do in this piece, and then we're done. Now these, I want you to play around with these, because I think you can probably do this one on your own. Play around with it. 
figure out each piece and then come back and check it and see how you did so I want to make sure that you got this stuff down solidly and as you solve each one of these don't forget make sure that you show your work because it's easy to get some of these mixed up and if you show your work it's easy for your teacher to figure out where it was that you messed up if you just have a bunch of numbers on the paper that doesn't always explain or justify your reasoning so make sure that you write an equation that's going to explain how you solve the problem so how'd you do with each one of these? Hopefully, you nailed them, you got them right, no big deal. Just take your time and make sure that you put the degree symbol on the end of each one of these because that is your unit and you do need to make sure that you have your unit for that. All right, so that's it for example number five. Now we've got one more example, but before that we've got a little bit more vocabulary and theorem stuff to do. So let's just kind of get these guys out of the way. Now here's a theorem, the first one says if a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, so that means it's drawn inside of a circle, or a circle is drawn around the outside of the triangle, the hypotenuse is going to be the diameter. So this guy right here, your hypotenuse of your right triangle, that is going to be the diameter of your circle. Looks pretty straightforward, and it is. It's not that complicated at all. So that's all there is to that. Now the other theorem that we're going to play around with a little bit is about this quadrilateral. It's going to be inscribed in a circle if its opposite angles are supplementary. Now, let me talk first about this word if right here, this IFF. -F. That's, that's an abbreviation for if and only if. So that's what that means right there. Now a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if its opposite angles are supplementary. So I'm just going to kind of call this angle one right there and I'm going to call this angle two over here so those two angles have to add up to 180 so one plus two those two spots they have to have a sum of 180 degrees now likewise my other pair of opposite angles say I'm going to put three up here and then four down there those two angles also three plus four whatever those are they're going to have to have a sum of 180 degrees also so that's going to be one of the things here. We're going to test that out very quickly here in these two examples. So what you have to be able to do is identify which ones are opposite. Well, these guys right here, that's one pair of opposite. So you're going to have x plus 80 equals 180. When you do your subtracting, you get x equals 100. So no big deal there. Now your other pair of opposite angles are these two. So your other equation is going to be 75 plus y equals 180 or when you solve for y you end up with y as a value of 105 and again don't forget the degree symbol make sure that you keep your units on there now I'm going to let you go ahead and figure out example B on your own then come back check it see how you did so how'd you do here on example 6b hopefully you hit it out of the park now be really careful here for Example B, you don't put the degree symbol next to 45 and 30 because that's not the number of degrees there are in the angle. That's just the value of each letter, the value of A or the value of B. Compared with example 6A, where the value of X was how many degrees there were in that angle and likewise for the value of Y. So small little technical stuff, but make sure you guys knock it out of the park and you'll be good to go. All right, that's it for this one. I've had enough of you guys for today, and I'm sure you've had enough of me, so we are out of here. We are done with this. We'll play around with this and practice this in class. All right, peace out, yo. Later.